Hey guys, man. Hey. This conversation is so fucking real and deep and shit, and I don't, I don't have a lot of valuable stuff to add to it. I just got a lot of dick jokes and weird stuff to talk about. Yeah. Bring it. Fuck it, right? Whatever. We did it. That was real. I um, I've been doing a lot of traveling, doing uh, comedy traveling, which I love to do because I'm always exposed to something. And that's what I love about traveling. It's like you learn something about yourself. You learn something about what you don't like, too. That's the great thing about traveling. You, unless you're exposed to people, you don't know what you hate about them. You know what I mean? So you got to be exposed to things to know, like, I don't fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, which is way in the mountains of North Carolina. And I realized I don't like people without teeth. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like people without teeth giving me advice, you know? I just feel like teeth are the first steps to advice. They're the initial thing for me to trust what you're saying. And if you don't have them, be gone, dude. I don't really care. <laughs> Figuring out race stuff through traveling, man. I just went to Bonnaroo, so I was gone for two weeks. And I just moved to LA from Boston. So LA was a culture shock for me because I had never seen so many homeless white dudes in my life. I was like, what is this? Just good white man potential being wasted on the streets. <laughs> what are you doing? And I really hate when they ask me for money. Like, bro, I'm a black lesbian. I'm never going to give you shit. <laughs> I have too many adversities. I'm not going to give you money. You could walk. Go cut your hair and go to a subway. Get a job. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But then I went to Bonnaroo, and they were even more free, man. It was even more broke down. It's just like people sleeping on the ground with no blankets, eating medium rare burgers. <laughs> Like, this is awesome. I had a medium rare burger for the first time. Didn't kill me. My mother lied, you know? <laughs> Everything my mother told me was a lie. And that's how I ended up doing mushrooms, because I was like, hey, if this burger shit is a lie, <laughs> maybe these mushrooms aren't that bad, you know? So I ended up in this trailer doing mushrooms with these dudes, and they put it in a chocolate bar, because white people know how to do drugs, right? So. He gives me this giant chocolate bar of mushrooms, and I eat it, and I'm like, where I'm gonna go see Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I go to this Pearl Jam concert, and halfway through the concert, I tweak out off the mushrooms. I tweak out, and I gotta get the fuck out of there. I'm rushing out of this Pearl Jam concert. I run to a corner, I dump six bottles of water on my head to bring myself back down. And then I'm like, what am I gonna do now? And I go watch a bluegrass band, cause like, fuck it, right? And I walk into this bluegrass experience, and that's when I realized why they're like, hippies was a movement and why they were like, oh, drugs bring people together. Because I'm pretty sure the whole time they were talking about lynching. I know they were, <laughs> but I couldn't stop watching because the mushrooms had like put the filter down and I was just like, this is good music. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with the message, but I like the vibes, you know? <laughs> so I'm hanging out. <laughs> And the Blue Guys fans over, and I'm like, what do I do now? And it was this little like EDM party, a little bit away from me. And I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll walk over here. So I walk over to this EDM party, and it's popping, and I'm watching it, and the DJ's going crazy. And then this Jack Black dude, like, he was super strong, man. Diesel, no shirt on. But he had on these giant fairy wings. <laughs> and he's walking through the crowd, and he's pushing people, like, man, you better not crumble my fairy wings, so I'll <laughs> fuck you up. And I was like, well. <laughs> What's going to happen? And then he stopped in this clearing, and a white dude who was equally as Jack in a Teletubby costume walked up to him. And I was like, what's about to go down? <laughs> this is about to be a showdown, right? And then they hugged. And as I saw it, I was like, ah, I don't know if this is how Martin Luther King dreamed it. <laughs> but I think this is it. I think, I think that's where we're at <laughs> as a society, man. It's where we're going. I'm not mad. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm kind of there as a person, man. I'm just like, man, we got to like just let stuff go. We got to start embracing stereotypes. I know that's a big thing to say, right? Because everyone's like, stereotypes are wrong. You can't judge people by a group. But I'm like, nah, man, just embrace your thing. Use it to your advantage and to help people. Because stereotypes aren't going away. But what you can do with stereotypes is dope. Like people think black people are hostile. I use that all the time. <laughs> I am not a awesome person by any means. I'm a hugger and I'm a lover. But what? I ride the train and the bus. I play that shit up. <laughs> I blast music out my headphones. I look left and right real crazy. <laughs> I bark every once in a while. 
No white people sit next to me for miles on the train or the bus. It is beautiful, because I don't got to deal with your boogie boards and sailboats and shit you bring on public transportation. <laughs> like, you don't know people got places to be, man. <laughs> like, you're not aware people are trying to go to work. <laughs> like, is that a saxophone? What the fuck is this dude doing? Yeah. I'm trying to clock in, bro. I'm just trying to clock in. <laughs> got to embrace your thing, man. Like, we think Asians are super, like, magical and karate tough. If you're not karate tough and you Asian, play it up, man. White women have the power of tears. You guys cry and get whatever the fuck you want. That's beautiful. Keep crying, white ladies. Don't stop crying, man. That's dope. I wish someone cared when I cried. No one cares, you know? That's the truth. No one cares, yo. I'd cry if people care, they don't care. And it's messed up, it's conditioning. I don't even care when I see black people cry. And that's fucked up. I see a black lady cry, I'm just like, uh, oh, man, times are tough. Toughen up. It's time to go live life. I see a white lady cry, I'm like, oh my God, how do we help her? Cause y'all just know how to break down, man. White women's tears are powerful. White women's tears are so powerful that a white woman could drown her own baby. And if she cries enough, she's not going to jail. Facts. I'm not saying postpartum's not real. I'm just saying we wouldn't know about it if white women weren't crying about it. <laughs> this is how real white women tears are. I just got a BMW. And the other day I was in my car, listening to the future, having a good time, no AC on, parked. 110 degree weather, the windows automatically went down. You remember that white lady that accidentally killed her kid from leaving the windows up and he overheated? They made a technology to excuse that behavior. That is the power of white women tears. We will make new technology to stop them from crying. But you can't help people with that. Like I was at a comedy festival recently. I was hanging out with my homeboy. We automatically look suspicious because he is a man, I look like a man. We were both black and we smelled like a shit ton of weed. We were smoking mad weed. So I'm trying to hide the weed. I'm ducking and dodging security. And then this white lady walks up and she's like, hey, I smell that weed you're smoking. I would love to smoke with you. I'll even light a cigarette to help mask the smell if you let me. And I felt like we had just picked up an item in Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> like you have just acquired white woman's shield. You are now invisible to cop security and otherwise nosy ass crackers. Hey, y'all were fun, bye.